Um, hello, welcome to the uh, master extension master gardener uh, special interest group. This is a basic skills session. We are recording it. Um, and to answer your question, Patty, um, if you want to take, so we did create an agenda. Patty and I did create an agenda and <laughs> should have discussed this before we started recording, but that's okay. Um, we're just going to go kind of uh, organically back and forth about the various topics. So let me start the share screen here with the agenda so everyone can see what we're hoping to talk about today. And I have, I have a case study that I've prepared for how to use this, um, an upload of bulk impacts with Daryl's spreadsheet tool. And uh, that's, and, and, in, and to answer your question, Patty, why don't you, um, do you, what's your comfort level? Do you want to take us through the first couple things? Sure. And then I can um, jump in when you'd like help or um, like I said, we'll just take this organically. And I also wanted to just mention that today's session is presented by myself, Patty, and the whole Give Pull Special Interest Group, because this is a collaborative effort. And I hope that if any of you have content or ideas that you um, find that would be helpful, please chime in. So without further ado, take it away, Patty. Okay. Uh, but, but as I get started on the logging in, I know um, Nora, Beth, there was maybe one other person that was really interested in this. Um, are, are you having any trouble logging in? Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm having any trouble. Um, Okay. So far. Okay. So um, if you want to go to the main page of WSU's Give Pulse, it's wsu.givepulse.com and it'll take you to this page. Let me go ahead and uh, screen share this. So, <clears throat> um, once you're on this page, you can go ahead and log in using your big red button because you're an employee. And I've got mine pre-filled for my, for my uh, password. So then I know I'm in because it says, hi, Patty. But I'm still on the same image here because I'm still on the main WSU website. And I, I manage two counties, so I always come to this website first because I have to come up here to manage which county I'm going to select. Um, another uh, way to do it is, is for you to come to my activity and go to groups and that will show the different groups that you might want to select. So <clears throat> let's select Yakima County. So this is my Yakima County uh, sign-in page. Uh, what's the next? I can't. I'm. Uh, let's see. I don't have that other screen up, Brittany. What's the net? I mean, uh, Harmony. What's the next bullet point that we're working on? Sure. Thank you, Patty. Um, the next one is um, locating county impacts. Okay. So, um, so I'm on Yakima, and we're gonna oh, locating the impacts or managing impacts. Uh, let's, let's go to, yes, locating your county's impacts to begin managing them. Okay. So <clears throat> I went up to manage up at the top, clicked on Yakima. Then I dropped down here to impacts. Now I know several of you do this a different way than I do. This is the path that I use. There's often several paths you can take in software to get to the same place. <clears throat> but I use a far left column, go to, to manage impacts, and it brings me to this main page and it shows um, it, it shows a mixture of impacts. <clears throat> so uh, Harmony taught me this real cool trick that has saved my bacon with this software. <laughs> and that is you 
press on um, the uh, raised section on your mouse and, and sweep across. And, <clears throat> and you can look at what you've got set up. So I want to select, go to verified and select pending in order to verify impacts. So that way, all the impacts that have already been verified are not also showing up in this list. Can I ask a question? Sure. Of course. Thank you. Okay, so we're, you're in the process of showing us how to verify impacts that are not in the pending status, correct? So that's why you chose that dropdown. That, uh, that are in the pending status. They're pending to be verified. Okay, good. This is just what I need then, because I have like 200 that are pending and I'm not sure why. Okay, I'll let you continue. <laughs> okay. I think it's uh, helpful at this point also, Patty, to show folks the configure layout options that are available to them. So every single, so when you're, what we're looking at right now on Patty's screen has been set up by Patty through mm -hmm. the configure layout options. If you'll, um, if you go up to uh, just up a, a couple inches right there, yes, and you click on that link, you have access to turn on or turn off um, the fields that you find most helpful to your for, for your workflow as you're looking at your impacts to verify them. So, um, so there's so there's a lot of fields as one can see. <laughs> so everyone has access to change what this screen looks like for their administrative workflow. And the way that will pop in or the way it will show up is based on the location of each item in this list. So if you want that verified uh, drop down to be closer to the front of this, uh, the list, you just grab it. And as, as you see, Patty's cursor now has turned into a, um, a, a four directioned arrow so that it can grab one of those categories and move it up and down just like that. Exactly. Thank you for, you're such a great demonstrator, mm -hmm. Patty. Um, so I felt like that's a, at this moment, it was uh, very poignant to, to point out this functionality in the software as well. Keep going. And that's in. Yeah, you want to make sure once you place everything where you want it, that you press apply, that you that you let the software know you actually want to apply that. Now the zip code will also come up in my in my screen. It should come up towards the end, but I don't see it. So where did you get that drop down again? Which which one of these was uh, that? Configure layout. Oh, configure layout. Okay. Can yeah. I ask another question? Yeah. Um, when I am verifying I go to bulk actions up there at the top where you just were next to configure layout. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's so I select all that are waiting to be verified. And then I go after I do that, then I hit verify selected. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. But probably what you might be running into is um, that sometimes you have to hit that twice. So say let's say i'm gonna here's sally mayo and and uh she spent an hour here on continuing ed she did a great class with deer in the garden Spencer, dun, 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 dun. um it's a zoom approved class okay so i'm going to verify that um when i do that i want to make sure that she's got her primary group correct and that it's not like 13 hours or something that is uh, like perhaps she made an error in her timing. So, you know, it looks reasonable. So I'm gonna verify that and I'm gonna come over here and I can go here and just um, just verify just that one, if I wanted to do one at a time, which is very time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> but this, whether you're doing a bulk or a single, you're gonna see this little rainbow circle go around. And, right. what, and it yeah. should say impact verified, but I don't see that. So if you're going to do like, say, um, this is how I 
uh, I can just show you the way I usually do um, um, verifications. I come up here to this little square here. So all of these are going to be verified. So what I'm looking for is any uh, any impact that doesn't meet the qualifications that I want. Then I would un unclick that box. Mm -hmm. So that's faster. So uh, John, he's got an hour that he served in demo gardens and I can kind of come back here and kind of look around and see what he's up to and, and so on. And I, was, I would go through the list and say, oh, say, I'm not sure about this one. So I would unclick Sally. Then I would come up here to bulk actions and I would click verify selected. Then so that then little rainbow circle would go around and around. And then sometimes <clears throat> it's not verified yet. It, you need to have, uh, when you're doing a bulk verification, you need to see uh, impacts verified uh, flash on the screen. If it doesn't, then you have to do it all over again. You have to press um, verify selected one more time. So question, because I've done that probably 15 times to try and get these, oh, these 274 verifications that are stuck in pending and I can't seem to get them out of this pending mode. So I'm just, I'm baffled because I just keep trying to verify and uh, they just keep mounting up and I can't seem to. They're stuck. <laughs> they're stuck yeah and i just i'm assuming it's something that i'm doing or not doing so beth thank you so much for bringing this to this um to this session we will let's um get through our class here yeah, and then no no not at all thank you for bringing it up and then we have it sounds like a great case study at the end to get in there and and workshop what's going on with your process and we'd be happy to help okay so thank I'll keep quiet and keep watching. <laughs> oh, no, thank you for bringing it up. Okay. Uh, so right. next, you want to go ahead next, Harmony? Sure. Want to jump in? Okay. Sh sure. So um, on our on the, I'm looking at the agenda. We've covered signing on. We've co covered locating your county, finding your county's impacts. Um, the next thing on the agenda is the impact verification criteria. Um, Patty has already started talking about this and um, basics are I from it as as we're at being administrators we just want to make sure that that your um, the impacts that you're looking at are making sense that they're categorized in the right place um, and and then if they are, then we can um, go move forward into the verification process. Um, we don't have a bullet point on here for editing them, but I'm going to add that. And I think if we have time at the end, we should add, um, talk about how to edit them. Um, the next thing that is here that I'd like to talk about is, oh, how to bulk verify. Yep, how to use the filters. We did that. Um, so the next piece is uploading impacts with Daryl's spreadsheet tool. So at this point, um, I am going to do a screen share and we'll just dive into the process. So this is um, a really great um, spreadsheet tool that was developed by Daryl Schlesser in uh, King County um, Master Gardeners. So thank you, Daryl. I hope, yep, you all should be able to see my screen here. So what I have done, um, what I've done here is I've um, gone through the process of already getting this tool uh, customized for my county. So when you receive it, it's not going to say Clallam County. It's not going to have um, a specific volunteers information. These will all be uh, fields that you can fill in, but there, and there's another section of fields that need to be feel, filled in as you prepare this tool for use in your county. Here on the second, um, so two tabs, the second tab has a section here for open event IDs. These are specific to everyone's group. Everyone's county has their own set of open event IDs in GivePulse. 
I will show you how to find them right now because that's important to this process. So um, when I'm gonna stop share here, we're gonna go jump over to Give Pulse and that's here, okay. So to find your open event IDs on your uh, Give Pulse environment, you're going to go to events under manage, um, manage events for your group. Then you're gonna wait for the little rainbow circles. And now <laughs> once you're here, um, this is um, my apologies. This was my my Clown County environment has um, a lot of events in there that I learned would be more a, a more efficient to do them as a recurring event instead of single events. And so there's just a lot of content. Well, long story short, if you scroll all the way down to the, if you go to the last page of your events, if you have a lot of events in your county, <laughs> so everyone's environment is different, you'll find that you'll get to your open opportunities. And these are the ones that you're looking for when you're, oh, actually, and you can, excuse me, this is a database. It has filters. Excuse me. Let me use the filters. In your manage events, go to the type select open opportunity, and then you will find the, the, the events that are open rolling enrollment type situation. From here, you can get into each of these, and then from there, you will find the number that you need, the event ID number that you need to populate into Daryl's spreadsheet. So for demonstration gardens in Clown County, the event ID is located up here, in the URL, in the address bar. So the open opportunity for Clallam Demonstration Gardens is this number here at the end of the URL. So that's how you find that number to populate into the spreadsheet. I'm going to stop share again on this. We're gonna jump back over to the spreadsheet. Stop share. Going to share screen on the spreadsheet. P.S. Daryl, if at any time I'm leaving out some major detail, please don't hesitate to, to jump in on that. So um, as you'll see here, um, that number on demonstration gardens matches what I just showed you all on the, U on the URL bar on the Give Pulse side. So once you have all your open event IDs populated into this table here, and you are ready to start using this form, but it's got to be used on a volunteer by volunteer basis. So this impact form can only be used for this volunteer named Jean Janice. So you got to have her first name, her last name, and her email address entered into these fields on the first tab. They will populate, as you can see, it's, it's, interactive, it's dynamic. So it's going to grab information from the first tab and pull it over into this second tab. So for this volunteer, um, I know she she is um, she's a great candidate because um, she is able and capable of using the Give Pulse environment, but she sent me two, vol two um, activities that she's done over the last couple uh, months that um, she didn't get entered in. And there's a couple more that I, I I was looking for them this morning and they're around. But for this purposes of this session, we're going to just enter these ones for her. Um, we have the um, continuing two continuing education opportunities. Um, this might be a good Jennifer question, but I'm at this point, she went to the, she did go to the Master Gardener 50th kickoff celebration with me. And I, I think I'm going to categorize that as continuing education because it's continuing education of the history of the program. Um, so that was the time that we were at uh, in Puyallup learning about the history of the program and the uh, demonstration garden there in Puyallup. And then she has done the July continuing education quiz. 
So next step is to prepare this for upload into the database. To do that, Daryl has added some excellent instructions right here on the second tab, and we're just going to go through this together. So once we're ready to go, we're going to make sure that we save this first as an Excel spreadsheet. So you just save it that either that way or you can use file save as. And now that it's saved as an Excel spreadsheet, we're going to create a CSV, a comma separated values file of this, and that will become our import file. So first we're going to do that. So literally save as, I'm going to save it in the place where I save all of the documents for Jean Janice. I'm going to save it as a CSV. It's important to note that at this point, you should be starting the save as CSV on the second tab. Uh, comma, oh, say, okay, so we're doing that. Save as um, the import file. I always save it with hyphen import file once I go to create the item that I'm going to use to change it into, or, or to put the data into GivePulse. So, so this is why it's important to start on the save as a CSV process on the set on the sheet that you intend to use for importing, um, because it says the selective file type does not support work, but workbooks that contain multiple sheets. So we're only going to save the active sheet. And that is exactly what we wanted to do. So clicking OK. And this is the message that you get every time you save something as a CSV. Yes, I do want to use a CSV file. So then um, we're going to move on to number four. So first you select all of the five, all of the sh uh, cells from A1 to Z21, just like this. You go, can you can copy, paste. I'm going to use this copy. And then right here, you're going to make sure that you copy the values. So that changes it from pulling the data on the first tab or the first sheet um, to just having so instead of, of instead of formulas in every single one of these cells you'll now have just the data instead of the formulas so now we can click out of there and as you'll see these are just um, the data um, and if I had done this before I just did that, you would have seen, oh, this is some, this is a formula and it's pulling data from the first tab into the second tab. So then we're moving on to step number five, which we did. Step number six. Yep. All the entries are um, valid for importing into GivePulse. So now we need to delete the data rows that do not contain impact entries, all of the ones that say column F empty. So I'm going to select those and remove them, delete. Okay. So now we're just going to be using it to import these two. Um, then we're going to delete the impact volunteer impact entry form tab, which is okay because we've already saved it. So we're gonna delete this tab. Yep, or sheet as it were. Um, so delete that. Next step, delete all of these instruction rows, but don't forget step number 10, which is to save it again as a CSV. And then we'll go over to give pulse and we'll um, add uh, it in. You, yes. Suggestion here. Yes. Uh, rather than selecting the cells for this step, um, in your far left margin, starting with row 24, sure. uh, select the select the rows from the margin and just oh okay. Yeah. And then right click in the right click in the margin. In the margin. Yeah, right click in the margin and delete rows. Um is delete going to be deleting yeah. the rows? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. So that's a very clean, clean way to delete any and all content. Um, 
thank you. Yeah, very. It's it's important as we're doing this process to make sure that the data is um, that the spreadsheet is uh, ready is doesn't going to have extraneous information. And so I've had luck doing it the other way, Daryl. But I appreciate you pointing out the um, the way that you just that we just demonstrated to make sure that it's a super clean uh, file as well. So thank you. Um, so now we're going to go file. Save as back into Gene Janice, and then we're going to choose the same uh, Microsoft Excel comma separated values file um, for 2023. Just save it again. That's all we're doing. I'm going to make replace it. Yes, with this new one, and yes, I keep want to keep using the CSV format. Okay. So now your import file is ready. You've gotten all your data in, you've converted it into an import file, and now we're gonna close it. Um, yes, save, and it's gonna ping me again. Oh, I just did this. Yes, I wanna replace it. Yes, I wanna keep using that format. <laughs> Great, okay, so now over to the Give Pulse environment. Here we go. All right, so now you have your import file. We're gonna go over here. No, sorry. Managing the Master Gardeners of Clown County. All right, here's your main admin dashboard. Impacts, going to manage impacts. From manage impacts, you're going to select one of the actions which in the in the upper corner here oop, in the upper corner here there's a big blue button called actions so managing impacts actions import from here you're going to choose a file all right we've done some work on this we have ready to go information and here's where I save all these things. Okay, the 2023 import file. Opening that, it has loaded it in. We're going to click the import button. And now it's showing what it found. This is good. And now we're going to confirm the import because we like what we see. Oh, this is great. Um, I just remembered something while the circles are going around here. The start time and end time in the spreadsheet, as you'll notice, um, you can enter in, in, well, the spreadsheet does have guidance for the formatting, but if you enter in 2.15 and just press enter, it's going to think that it's 2 a.m., 2.15 a.m. in the morning. But if you enter in 2.15 and you write literally p.m. after that, then it will convert it into military time. Or if you can just enter it in in military format, that also works as well. Um, okay, the import is complete. Ta-da! Let's go look at what this created. So we're going to look for impacts, managing our impacts. We're gonna filter just for Gene Janice's pending impacts. Pending first. I have that little drop down right at the front of mine because I it's the first thing I change as I'm getting in here. So we're gonna let's see. I know I don't think, yeah. So you just type in one of their names if it's but make sure it's so harmony when you when you <gasps> work. Oh yeah. It will automatically verify them during the import. So Thank you. you want to look at verified instead of pending. Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you for reminding me that, Daryl. Um, okay, so here we are. The, the ones that we just entered were her records for 2023. So here's Jean Janice for the 7th of July. That's when she did the quiz. And then that, let's see. And then the other one is when she went to the Master Gardener 50th kickoff celebration at the um, Puyallup Research and Extension Center. And so, oops, 
I wasn't sure which one of those was going to be the one that would show up the data, but there it is. Okay. So now, oops. So now you can see uh, what, see, you can see the data, it's verified and it, it populates into the database here. Um, this is something new that I don't think a lot of folks, um, maybe, well, maybe this is beyond the purview of the basic skills um, session that we're doing right now, but maybe in, session in a follow-up session we could get further into how to implement custom drop down fields for collecting custom data about the records or the the impacts that your volunteers put into the system i okay. have a question sure so in the um the spreadsheet that uh for the import mm -hmm. um, there's some sp specific columns now in when we've added um so for where um where did you volunteer and what did you do so it's some uh, there's been some changes some of you have done and and what i did in in one of my open um opportunities was i created a, a drop down um so like for demonstration gardens so they could select the demonstration garden so where do you at it's uh, you can get it in there but um it's it's go where did you volunteer it's going to be it's going to show up in a different column than that so are you adding uh, an extra column so that you can add that field number to to here to the sheet or and you know like if, if you've if you've done that to multiple mm -hmm. um opportunities you'd have um however many opportunities you did that to, you'd have that many extra columns. Are you just adding that to the end with that that uh, column number? Right, you so- know what I'm saying? Am I, I making I, any sense at all? <laughs> yes, yes, I, I'm, I think I understand what you're asking. So um, uh, like I said, the, um, I, so Patty, both Patty and I, I've been looking for ways to, grab more detailed information from our volunteers in an easier way for them to process it. And we've done that by adding custom fields in our Give Pulse environment that um, have drop down menus so that every single time someone comes in and wants to do a demonstration garden, they only have two choices in this drop down field. Instead of an open box that says, where did you volunteer? Or what did you do? They just have a drop down menu that says um, if they once it, and it's dynamic as um, as they select demonstration gardens, then this pop this drop down box pops up and they have Woodcock or Fifth Street. Those are the names of the gardens that are here in Clallam. Uh, so um, in order for that level of functionality to be translated into a spreadsheet for bulk importing. That is a topic I think that would be in more of an advanced session through this set through this group. Um, because it would be it, this changing this import tool that we're all looking at into something that would encompass that that um, that would mimic the the user environment that I've created on the website, but in a spreadsheet format is um, that's a, that's Excel, Excel, advanced Excel, <laughs> um, pro, advanced Excel project. I don't, I don't have the um, engineering know-how to, to create that. So it, that would be something that it would be great to kind of workshop as a group or, or maybe that's, um, well, I know that Daryl has mentioned it's on his to-do list, which <laughs> I'm, as, if it's like our, if it's like any of our to-do lists, administrating Master Gardener program is a great job and it's not, it's a, it's a never ending task. So um, whenever you get around to it, Daryl, I know all of us would be very, very grateful. And we haven't um, pushed that um, we're getting a little in the weeds here, but we haven't moved more closely towards 
encouraging folks to change their environment the way Patty and I have because it comes there. There's some functionality issues with the user environment that um, make it problematic for editing. So when you find one that's miscategorized, it's a two-step process to change it, and it doesn't delete the ex the original data that was input. So there's Great. there's some. So yeah. follow-on question then is if you're not importing the um, the contents of that that new drop down field mm -hmm. are you then going in and editing those impacts to add that so that you can see it later on mm, or are you no. just leaving it as a you're just leaving it blank i'm leaving it blank because it because and i'm not i'm as you can see, I was using it a lot more in 2022 when I was opening the files. You could see that I have files for a lot of folks from last year. So I was using it more heavily at that time, but I'm not doing that now. I have stopped encouraging the use of the import tool because of my custom environment. Um, and I'm only using it for volunteers who like for example, Jean, her computer isn't working right now and she needs, she wants help to get those things in. Right. So I am encouraging yeah. folks to get more comfortable with using the software themselves. We using the, the web-based software themselves right. and hosting workshops, I, and, et cetera. And I agree with that. And that's kind of what I do, but I was getting ready to do a few uploads for a few specific people. And mm -hmm. I had just recently implemented that drop down for our demonstration gardens. Mm. And I thought I got to looking at it and I go, oh, wait, I'm going to have blank, mm -hmm. a blank column now. So yeah. that's what prompted the question. So yeah, and just, I'll just, uh, I'll figure something out. <laughs> and Craig, I have some ideas for how to make that work, but it's going to have to be something that I work on down the road at some point. Um, yeah. Just because it's, I have other other things that are higher priorities on my list right now. But, um, you know, I think what Harmony is saying is that um, she's using, using it occasionally still for expediency with the understanding that um, those descriptions are not going to be in the fields where she'd like them to be. Um, and so because of that, she's also reducing her usage of it right now. Um, but, you know, however we tackle that in the future, if, if we're going to be able to use a tool like this in the future, um, once more of us move to using custom questions in the impact forms, what that means is that, that each county is going to have to have its own custom input sheet if we're going to continue using it. Right. Yeah, understood. Um, so. I will um, I will look at at our sheet and 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 maybe come up with a plan that I'll run by you and see what you think of it before I try to use it. Um, but I won't. You know, I'm not going to be asking you to do anything special for for us. Just just you know, let me know if I'm on the right track. If if I do reach out, yeah. but uh, yeah, you got you got. I know everybody's got a lot on their plate. So I think I've taken up enough time with this question. So I'll just. Um, relinquish the microphone and, and move on. So okay. the, um, just to ver just to verify, uh, I'm because I have sort of created my own um, Excel type of sheets for reporting at the end of the year, which are not as complicated as Daryl's, <laughs> but this is primarily used to import information of people who do don't use give pulse for impacts that you have to upload is that what it's mostly used for the one that i just uh, demonstrated yes yes it's a very it's an excellent tool for bringing on information and hours and content for folks who either their computer broke or uh, using the online system is uh, too, it, it's just not a, not, not some, it's despite training and outreach, they, they're just still not able to use the environment on their own. So it's okay. a good workaround for those situations. Okay. So it's not, is it also used for year-end reports in some fashion or? 
No. What I just okay. demonstrated? No, it's okay. purely for putting content into the database. Okay. Um, speaking of reports, um, that is the last bullet point. Would someone else like to take that on? I can show a real basic impact tag summary um, if report, but if, would anyone else like to share their own experience with running reports on GivePulls? Why don't I jump in and, and show filtering first, Harmony? Um, okay, that sounds great. Nora might want to see that. That might be more a little more basic before getting into reports. But okay, I uh, like it uh, because I've been using GivePulse for months, Nora. And what 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 Harmony just showed me with Daryl's Excel sheet kind of went kind of in a little bit and kind of over the oh. top. So okay, it, it sorry, doesn't, it doesn't seem real real basic to me. But uh, you know, I'm not always in Excel. You know, that's not a um, a tool that I use a lot. I, I I use it for just charts and things, not, not an advanced version. Um, so let, let me screen share here real quick. So, um, uh, so I'm in Yakima right now and I'm, I'm in impacts and I'm not sure if anybody's talked to you about breadcrumbs, but along the top here, they, um, if you talk to anybody from GivePulse, they like to call these breadcrumbs. <laughs> so I'm in impacts and <clears throat> these are, I put John's name in here for John Strong. So now I've only got John's impacts. And I went up here to the, to the filter and I put in uh, January 1st and then to June 1st, just to see, what John did in the first half of the year. And so <clears throat> uh, then I can click filter and the same information will come up, but that's how I got John's information up. I, um, so I brought my little verified button forward as, as Harmony had hers, but um, so these are all of John's that were verified from January 1st to June 1st of 2023. And <clears throat> if I wanted to look at how much continuing education John had done, I can come here and type in continuing education and find it and click it. Then it's going to show me how much continuing education John had between January 1st and June 1, uh, and all the entries that he made. And he has 22.75 hours in that time span. Did you have any questions about that? Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I do have one question. Uh, so when you have the top filter, does it filter the dates that they actually did the activity versus uh, there's another calendar that focuses when the energy, uh, the entries were put in? Um, it will show the dates they did the activity. Okay, cool. I sometimes forget that and um, it's an easy mistake to make when you're new. It may, um... There's also um, a way to um, to change when to to filter. So all of, what's great about it is that this is a database, and there is a way to filter um, the start dates, the start and end times by using this. Um, so if you just wanted to look at the impacts that have happened in just 2023 start here with the start date and now you see how it's going blue as you drag your mouse across the numbers you use these little arrows here and we'll get to today which is the 26th of july and now we see this date range down here from the first of january 2023 to 26th of july 
apply. So now it's just going to show the verified impacts for Gene Janus from this date range. I could remove Gene Janus's name. And I could look at just the verified impacts for Clella Master Gardeners for that date range. It'll give you the total hours here at the bottom. It's a lot of hours. Um, oh, we could look at all of them, including the ones that are still pending. <laughs> oh, never ending job. 6,000. This is a better number, 6,456. So that shows you that you've got 86 volunteers who have worked with the county putting in this many num this many hours between the 1st of January and the today's date. Sorry, Patty, did you have another some, something that popped up for you? Um, I just had a, a thought that, and I never really thought about this before, but um, there are, uh, Nora kind of brought it up with her question, but the start date and the end date of anything uh, it does sort of beg the question, is it the date we verified it? Is it the date they entered it? Or is it the date that they did the impact? And I always assumed it was the date they they created, they um, entered, no, not entered their impact, the date, and that, that there's a third date, a fourth date, uh, but the date they actually did the activity. That's what we're looking at right now. Okay. This column right here, the start date, is the this this piece of data is telling me that this person on the 24th of July is submitting an impact for right. being on the garden tour okay. um, at this time. And if you use the filter at the top instead, at the mm -hmm. very top, that will also filter by start date. I'm sorry, what are you saying, Daryl? Um, if instead of the filter that you're using right there, if you use the filter at the very top, that one, oh. also, yeah, that one yes. is also by start date. And I think that was Nora's question. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that, that one will filter by start date as well. But it's the date that the volunteer is submitting data for. This is it is the, it is the start date of the of the activities. So yes. it, it filters on that start date field as opposed to any of the other date fields. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. So we'll get the same list again um, by using either using it here or using it here. Yeah. And yep. something to watch out for if you're using the, the filter at the top is that um, it, it will sometimes change either remove or reinstate filters um, down in the columns when you add a filter at the top. Mm. So, uh, if you're using both sets of filters, be sure and double check your filters if you're trying to pull a report. Make sure that it hasn't changed the filters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, because there was some situation because I usually look at the entry date, you know, and manage that way. Uh, but there was some situation where I used the top filter uh, and then I realized that uh, the data wasn't matching. Um, and so there's situations where it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, there's in, in their code, there's some kind of conflict between the filter at the top and the filters at the heads of the columns. Mm -hmm. So if I have filtered a column and then I add, add a filter at the top, um, it will sometimes either remove or reinstate a previous filter in the columns. So I just double check the filters each time I do that. Cool, thank you. That's helpful. I, I thought I was going crazy at the end of the year when that was happening to me. I, I thought it was a me problem, but okay, good to know. So um, thank you very much, everybody. Um, like I said, this is a collaborative effort. And I just wanted to mention that at this point, we are well poised from, and this is, I think would make a great conclusion to do a really basic report. It's the impact tag summary. 
Um, since I've already applied this filter from the 1st of July or 1st of January to the 26th of July, it's going to give us the impact tag summary for just this date range. So that's something that I find really helpful. Um, it bear, it bear, and I'd like to um, mention that when you export, when if you want to export just the raw data also, it's important to note that the this is a very, very, for all of the for all of the things that um, we all I know each and every one of us has um, our own little list of like oh I wish Give Pulse was easier here and here and here but actually it um, for all of that it is a very powerful tool it does allow you to create a very custom setup to look at the exact data points that you want to see and once you have customized your list to be exactly what you want it to be, you can export the raw data. So you could do that and you could say, I just want to see these visible columns that I have created. I just, you can create your own custom report. Like if I just want the raw data and you're really good at playing with stuff in Excel, you can just grab that, which is what I do. And then you click close. Um, the being good at Excel is a, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a work in progress. I'm always learning. It's always learning spirit of spirit of learning. But the other thing you can do is called an impact tag summary. And this one's really helpful, um, for looking at the, uh, totals categories. So like how much time has the Clallam Master Gardeners put into demo gardens? How much time have they put into continuing ed or uh, youth outreach time? If this is a good report for finding those data points. So once, because that's a larger export, it's going to give you this message that it's going to email you with a download link. So let me stop the share and see if it will be available to us to look at that report in a timely fashion during the span of this session here together. Um, close that, let's see. Uh, mm, let me refresh my inbox again not seen right it does come through uh harmony's email it'll get uh, a report oh. sent to harmony's email yes um there it is i have my download file i'm downloading it and i'm gonna open it so what it sends you is it sends you a csv file so i'm gonna share this here is what the impact tag summary looks like. So from here, one of the, um, and Daryl, <laughs> I would appreciate some of those little Excel pointers um, that I have to look up every time I play with it. So, so if I wanna make it so that it um, expands out to, uh, if I want to make it so that all the columns expand out so I can read the top of them, is that a control all like this? And then there's some. Um, yeah, if, if you select all like that, then in the A cell, just double click that right border of the A cell. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So now we can see all of the data expanded. It was um, very compact there at the beginning. Um, one of the handy things we can do with this data is all sorts of filtering things. Um, and I'm not enough of an Excel pro to just be like, here's a pivot table, blah, 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 blah. And here's how you gather all that data. So, but I wanted to mention that here it is. So here's the impact tag summary for the, um, the date range that we asked for. And from here, um, why? It's only 81. Hmm. Columns. I thought it was supposed to be 86. Anyway, 
this is a rabbit hole, but I'm that's how you run an, an um a report and maybe we should have a follow-up session um taught by someone who can just run through Excel and be like, here's how you do all these cool things with Excel spreadsheets. That's not me because me is like looking things up on YouTube as I go like, oh yeah, oh yeah, here I go. And hey, I then, got a real go quick ahead. question. Uh, what's the difference between an Excel document like and a, a dot CSV? What, what are those differences? So an Excel spreadsheet, um, the, the dot, yeah, X, XLS, the dot, the file name XLS is a Excel file that has all of the functionality for Excel to be able to do multiple sheets and to filter the data and to, um, well, you can probably still do that with CSVs also, but a CSV is a comma separated value file. And that is just for dealing with data. Really, it's like for exporting data into a database or importing data um, to a database. Um, it's a it's just a way to move large large amounts of data back and forth between um, online systems. Uh, um, I think. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That clarifies that. I'm going to let Daryl talk maybe expand on that because that was a really um, basic no. yeah, definition. Was, that that was that was perfect harmony um thanks <laughs> a, a csv file is is really just a much cleaner uh data sheet uh without all of the bells and whistles of excel mm -hmm. now well, when i export sometimes it gives me a message that you're losing data with the csv is that a thing to worry about that's great no that you if when you're um when you're sent when you're when you're creating a CSV, it's going to tell you every single time. They're like, hey, don't you want all the bells and whistles? Don't you want to have all these cool um, things to work with in Excel? And you're like, no, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm just moving data here and I just need a CSV. But it's going to tell you every time. So you just have to click OK. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, this is great. Yeah, go ahead, Daryl. I, I was going to say Beth Chisholm had a concern, and it sounds like she's having trouble getting um, getting verifications to process. And um, one of the the way she said it made me think she's trying to verify all two hundred and some pending entries that she has um, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, that could potentially be an issue that could be causing um, give pulse to time out. So uh, I mean, I I never process more than one page at a time, which is which is twenty Same entries. Here. Yeah, here. it just becomes problematic, and I I don't know why there's so much lag time in the system. Right. Um, that could be part of the issue but the other thing that i have found is that if you even even if you select a whole page or you know even you know six or eight entries um it can sometimes appear that give post is timed out so you'll you'll select your entries uh click uh click verify entries and it processes for a minute and then it stops and you'll see that all of your entries are still there and they're still check marked. Um, what I have found is that they're still processing in the background. And if I click to verify again, um, for some people, it will show that those have been verified twice. And for whatever reason, I have one volunteer in King County who gets a notification every time one of her entries is verified. Um, Give Post cannot explain to me why that is and why it's only her who gets that notification and not the rest of us. But um, if I click again to verify when I'm verifying her entries, she gets multiple notifications. That's weird. Uh oh. And I think the same thing is happening. We've talked about duplicate entries. Um, and I may have mentioned this in a previous uh, Wednesday morning meeting, but um when volunteers are keying an entry and they get the little the little dots going around and around 
um, if they click the back button in their browser because they think nothing's happening and enter it again, then they're entering a duplicate entry because even though those little dots are going around and around forever, that entry seems to be capturing. And even when their screen times out and basically it looks like give post has just stopped processing, uh, I think what we're finding is that the entry has still captured. And so um, I think maybe we might want to advise volunteers who are expressing a concern about that, that if, uh, if it times out while they're waiting for an entry to process, they can just go to their impact screen and see if it captured. I have a separate meeting with Beth this afternoon, so I was going to talk to her about that, the her the problem that she was having and see if we could do one page at a time, get them to go through. Yeah, and it might help to if you're able to have her screen share, Jennifer, yeah. so you can see exactly uh, the steps that she's going through. Um, it's also possible that she's missing a step. Right. Okay. Well, uh, Harmony and Patty, thank you so much. I uh, am always impressed by people who can walk others through a large process like that and do it clearly and articulately with patience and pointing. And I, I, I'm not good at that. So when I see other people that are good at it, I'm always in awe. So thank you so much, Harmony and Patty. That was that was fantastic. Yes. Thank you. I think we might have gone too fast, but. That's okay. We got a sharp group here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I know it's after 10 o'clock. Daryl and I are going to stay on to talk about um, reapplication and a new requirement that is um, that we're going to have to follow for civil rights compliance. Uh, Kenitra Keeney is going to be on our program coordinator call this afternoon to talk about um, what we need to do as a program to come into compliance. Uh, and GivePulse is going to be one of the tools that we use um, to come into compliance with collecting race, ethnicity, and gender information from our volunteers. Uh, and Daryl has a, a draft um, survey that will become part of the reapplication uh, and so Daryl and I were going to stay on to talk about that. We're happy to have anybody who wants to stay on the call to talk about it with us, or if you need to go to your next uh, meeting or project or whatever you need to do, please feel free to do that too. Don't forget, Jennifer, you're still being recorded at this point. Oh, thank you, Beverly. Okay, I will stop the recording. Thanks, everybody. Have a